One of the greatest promises that Jesus makes can be found in Luke 11 when he says, Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door shall be open. For whoever asks, receives. Whoever seeks, finds. And to whoever knocks, the door will be open. And then he continues by asking a question. He says, who of you would give your son or a daughter a fish, a, a snake, if they were to ask for a fish? Would any of you? You only have good things to give your children, right? And he says, if you who are evil know how to give good things to your children when they ask, how much more will your father in heaven give good things if they ask? And sometimes we don't ask for the really good things. And today, I want us to ask for the most beautiful things we can ever hope to receive. One is the Holy Spirit, and two are the gifts the Holy Spirit brings with him when he comes. Most of us don't know what those gifts are, but he comes with four bags full of gifts. Do you want to know what they are? One, we're going to read this together, all right? And as we're reading this, I want us to make a little note of the things that you might particularly want to ask God for. And the first place you will find these gifts are in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 2 to 3. Can you read this along with me, please? The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. First bag of gifts are known as the Isaiah gifts or are known as the gifts of sanctification. And these gifts are given to us to make us become more like Jesus. How many of you want to be like Jesus? Can I see your hands? Everybody? Good. Now, in order to be like Jesus, you need to receive these gifts from God. And the gifts are wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and a fear of God and piety. Now, in the verse that you've just read, fear of the Lord is repeated twice. And the reason for that is because... In the old translations, they used to repeat it. But in the Latin Vulgate translation, the second fear of the Lord was translated as piety. Now, in order to become like Christ, we need to have a mind of Christ, which means we need to have the wisdom of Christ. And that is something many of us lack because we have the wisdom of this world. Do we not? But Jesus says, if you really want to do the things of God, then you need to have the mind of God. And what we need is wisdom. And God promises that those who ask for wisdom will receive it. Knowledge is knowing the things of God. Understanding is knowing the heart of God. Courage is doing the things that God asks us to do, which aren't always the easiest things to do. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And you know, when I was small, my father always used to say that to me. And I thought it was stupid. Why should I be afraid of God? But I understood truly, if one wants to grow in holiness, one needs to have a healthy fear of God. And finally, you come to piety, which is basically a holy love towards God. God says, you need to love me with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and with all your soul. And now here is the thing now. There are a whole bunch of gifts called the charismatic gifts, right? Have you heard of them? It's the gift of healing. You basically pray for somebody and you ask God to heal them and God listens to your prayers. There are the gift of miracles whereby you can actually walk on water. You can actually multiply fish and loaves if you believe you can do that. Now, a lot of people want to go straight to those gifts, those gifts, but I want to tell you something. All the gifts begin with opening this particular bag, the gifts of sanctification. Because what happens after you start using these gifts, you start to bear fruit. 
Okay? Another verse is going to come at the back, and I'd like you to read that verse together, please. Go on. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, forbearance, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Now, <clears throat> I want to ask you a question, and this is a question I've asked you before, okay? How do you know that I, who is standing in front of you, am not a false prophet? If you listened to this before, you would have had the answer pat by now, by the fruit. Jesus says, beware of false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. But then he says, by their fruit you will recognize them. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. So if you find a preacher who stands over here and talks beautifully about love, but out of here he's anything but loving, you can tell that he is a false prophet. But you know what? Just like you can tell a prophet by the fruit, you can also tell a Christian by the fruit that they bear. And if you, my dear brothers and sisters, don't have these fruit, what are the fruit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control, you are not a good Christian. How many of you get angry here? Raise your hands. Thank you for being honest. Anger is one of the fruit? No, self-control is one of the fruit. And how do you receive these gifts? Only when you start living a life like Christ. And then these gifts simply follow you wherever you go. Now, once you become like Christ, and once you start exhibiting these fruit of the Spirit, God starts to unleash the third bag of gifts, which are the gifts of service. Okay? Read what's behind me together. All right, you have a whole bunch of gifts of service over here. And you would notice some of the people here using those gifts already. Not all are mentioned in this particular passage. But there are gifts of administration. There are gifts of counseling. There are gifts of leading worship. There are gifts of teaching and preaching, like what I'm doing. And I hope I'm doing a good job. Am I? Good. There are so many gifts. And when you start using these gifts for the kingdom of God, there opens the fourth bag of gifts that are simply extraordinary. These are the gifts of manifestation, also known as the charisms of the Holy Spirit. And I'd like you to read these. And honestly, I need you to pay attention to the very first line that it says over here. To each is given. Read it. Stop once again. I need you to read that one more time because I am telling you most of the people sitting here don't know that God says that to every one of you who believes in him, one of these gifts, at least one of these gifts has already been given. Now read the gifts. Wisdom, knowledge, faith and healing. Continue. Which one have you been given? God does not lie in his word. And when he says that every single one of you who believes in him has been given at least one of these gifts, then which one is yours? Is the gift of wisdom very different from the first gift? 
Because this wisdom is the supernatural ability to understand the things of God and to reply when confronted with a problem. Many times the Pharisees tried to trap Jesus with their questions, but Jesus was always able to give a retort that baffled them completely. That was the gift of wisdom coming into play. We have the gift of knowledge that can be seen over here. And what knowledge is this? Not the knowledge of the things of the world, but once in a way when you're talking to somebody, especially when you might be counseling that person, you will just know in your head what this person has done. Sometimes you will know the minutest details of that person's life that the person himself has forgotten. Then you have the gift of faith. And we all know the things that Jesus did through faith. God says, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and the mountain will move. Then there is the gift of healing, a supernatural ability that lets you simply pray with somebody in faith and the person is healed. Then you have the gift of working miracles, just the kind of miracles that Jesus worked in his life. And I know there are many of us who sometimes doubt that, but Jesus himself says, John 14, 12, I tell you the truth. If anyone has faith in me, he will do what I have been doing. Indeed, he will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. There he sits at the right hand of the Father and he looks at his people and he wants to know among the people who are gathered over here listening to his word, how many are there who really believe that they can work miracles in their lives and in the lives of others? And whenever he sees somebody stepping forth, in a way stepping forth on water, I was having this discussion in our office last week about how sometimes God wants us to get out of our boat and do extraordinary things. But as long as we're in the boat, we will do ordinary things. Locked in there by our fears, locked in there by our paradigms. But when we say, hey, I want to walk on water too because Jesus, if you did that, then I can do that too. Why can I do that? Because you say nothing is impossible to me. And then God says, there is a person speaking in faith, speaking words that appeal to my heart and my mind, and I will answer their prayers. And that is the gift of miracles. Then you have the gift of discerning spirits. There are evil spirits. There are good spirits. And in order to journey in this world, we need to be able to tell which spirits are these. And very often when you're praying with somebody, you'll find that person rolling on the ground and manifesting. And we recently had a talk that I gave to the people and I spoke to them about how manifestations take place. And a lot of people who were there have started noticing these manifestations in people around them. Now one can be that the person has an evil spirit within them, but he also can have mental illness that plagues somebody. And the discernment of spirits helps us to determine whether that person is truly demonically oppressed or that person is inflicted by some kind of mental trauma. Then you have the gift of tongues. And a lot of people don't seem to like this gift because it doesn't seem to make sense. But you know what? This is one of the most beautiful gifts that you can receive. Why is that? Because you short circuit your brain and go straight from your heart to God's heart. Because what happens when we pray most of the time is we're trying to formulate words. We're trying to put things in a way that is pleasing to God, especially when people are around us. But then when we are alone with nobody around us, just God and us, and we want to bypass this brain, which very often gets in the way, we just open our mouths and talk to God in what I sometimes call baby language. You know, have you ever spoken to a baby? What do you speak to the baby in algebra? You code quadratic equations? You speak to them in big words? No, it'll be na 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 And it's the same thing with God. And when you speak in tongues, it's a, basically a way of connecting straight to the heart of God. Now, one of the problems, especially with Christians these days, is they say, I don't want this gift. Give me one of the other gifts, healing and miracles and, and faith. Those are power gifts. I want those. But listen to me. If I were to come to your house with a little present, and I gave that present to you, and you say, no, I don't want this present. What am I going to do? Give you another one? Most likely, I will take that present with me. I will go away. And if I come to your house again, it will be empty handed. Right? So when God comes with his gifts, don't say, no, I don't want that. I want that. Accept it gratefully. Use it. And then see the wonderful things that God does. 
through you, through these gifts. And then, of course, most of the time you can't understand what you're saying because the gift of tongues is something that nobody can understand. God has an answer for that too. He has another gift called the interpretation of tongues. So when you basically speak in tongues, he helps you to understand what it is that you're saying. And more than that, he might help somebody else understand what you're saying. Now, I remember when I got this gift, I begged for it. I begged for it simply because I wanted something from God. And I had this minister come and pray with me one day. And after he left, I started going, ba 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 And I said, what is that? And he said, that's the gift of tongues. I said, that is extraordinarily stupid. What kind of gift of tongues is ba 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 But I'm a determined guy. And, you know, sometimes I don't mind making a fool of myself. So I did that, and I continued to do that, ba 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 for a long time. And then two weeks later, I found myself, as I was doing this, I was starting to speak in a language that ever since that day, I've used to communicate with God. And because I would love to know what that language says, I asked God to give me the understanding of what that language is. And now, the beauty is I can say things to God, and very often I can know exactly what it is that I am saying to him, which makes it very wonderful. And I would like all of us to have these gifts. Now, as I told you before, there is no rule about receiving these gifts, but they seem to follow a sequence, okay? And the sequence, once again, is you begin with the gifts that make you like Jesus. Those are called Isaiah gifts, the gifts of sanctification, and they are... Wisdom and understanding, counsel, might, knowledge and a fear of God, and piety. Can you repeat that, please? Wisdom, counsel, might, knowledge, a fear of God, and piety. Which one do you want? Say all of them. We are greedy of the things of the world, are we not? How many of you are satisfied with a little bit of money in your account? You want a lot of it. And then you're not satisfied with the money. You want a car and you want a house and you want more and more and more. And I'm not saying that is wrong, but I'm saying you need to hunger for the things of God as much as you hunger for the things of the world because the things that God gives you are far, far, far better than anything the world could give you. So hunger for them. I hungered for them. I got one gift. I, I said, thank you, Lord, very much. I'm very happy with that. When's the next one coming? And I would badger him until he gave me the next one. But it begins with the gifts that make us be like Jesus. Because truly, you need to be like Jesus. Okay? Now, when, like I said, you start becoming like Jesus, you start to bear the fruit of the Spirit. And you start to be more loving and more kind and more gentle you find yourself very slow to anger, yeah? And I'm sure a lot of us could use that particular fruit. Don't, don't we? Can't we? Yes? Now, when you start the fruit of the Spirit, what happens is people start to see you doing all these wonderful things. So they come to you for help. God says, now I can use you in this ministry or that ministry. And he starts to put you to use in variety of services. And this is why I encourage you to put your hand to the plow. God has always said the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. He needs you to help him. He needs you to be his hands. He needs you to be his feet. He needs you to be his mouth. And when you start to use these gifts that you've been given in his service, then he starts to release these power gifts. And you will find that when you pray with people, the sick start to get healed. You will find that when you pray with people, those who are oppressed are set free. You will find that as you start to do things for God, miracles start to follow you. The most amazing signs and wonders that you can imagine, just like Jesus promised. And all these wonderful, wonderful things. Now we need to know what these gifts are to be able to ask for them. Today, Jesus himself is going to be here and we're going to pray. We're going to pray that he really pours out all his gifts upon us. Now I know that you might not have understood everything of what I said. It doesn't matter. Because what you're going to do, what I hope you're going to do, is go home, go 
through Isaiah chapter 11 verses 2 to 3. Go home and go through Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 24. Go home and go through Romans chapter 12 verses 6 to 8. And go home and look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 7 to 10. You're going to do that? Because that will be a barometer truly to God of how serious you are about acquiring these gifts. Now we'd like to just invite the Holy Spirit before Jesus himself makes an appearance. So invite the choir back. I invite all of you to please stand up and start to pray with me. Father God, we want to thank you for this evening. We want to thank you for the words that we have just heard. We want to thank you for the promises that you make to us in your word. You have told us, Lord, that if we ask, we will receive. You told us, Lord, that if we seek, we will find. And you told us, Lord, that the door will be open to those who knock on it. We're here, gathered, your children tonight. And some of us are really children, Lord, and I'm so happy that even the youngsters have gathered here for a surprise that I believe will touch their lives and change them forever. But it's not only the little children who need to be blessed. It is all the children here, Lord. And like a child, we yearn for gifts. And we believe that the gifts you're going to give us here tonight are going to be great. We ask you for them, Lord. And we're going to wait until you're here to ask you. But in the meantime, we'd just like to invite your spirit as we sing to him.
praise your holy name, Jesus, Lord. We praise your holy name for the mighty God that you are, for the God of love, for the God of mercy, for the God of compassion. We give you praise for all the things that you do in our lives, all the blessings you pour out upon us day after day. We want to thank you for our families. We want to thank you for our jobs. We want to thank you for the houses we live in and the food that we eat. We want to thank you for so many things that we take for granted sometimes. But today we want to thank you for those, Lord. We want to thank you for the breath of air that we breathe. We want to thank you for the gift of each other. We want to thank you for this meeting here tonight and for all those who make it possible to have it. We also want to thank you in advance for all the blessings we are going to receive here tonight. And it's not just the gifts we spoke about that we're going to receive. We're going to receive healing in body and soul and spirit and mind. We're bruised emotionally. We struggle through so many things and with so many things. And there's not a single one over here, Lord, who's not in need of something. But we count on your promise and your promise says ask and you will receive. And today we're going to ask. Today we're going to ask for healing. Today we're going to ask for freedom. Today we're going to ask for more blessings, Lord, that will help us live in this world. It's not easy. We need jobs. We need money. We need a place to live. We need food to eat. We need people to love and be loved by. In all these petitions, we present to you here today. And Lord, as you come, we know that you're going to answer every single prayer that we make in your name. Do you believe? If you believe, say amen. I request those of you who can kneel to kneel, those of you who cannot kneel to stand up and give honor to the King of Kings who's here coming in our presence. Lord, let's all declare it. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. He has risen from the dead. And he is Lord. And he is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every knee shall Every tongue bow. confess. Christ is Lord. That Jesus Christ is Lord. We bowed our knees before him, acknowledging him as our king. And our king he is. Every king has power. Every king has the ability over life and death to a certain extent. Every king has the ability to render favors to those who ask and seek. Here before us tonight is the king of kings who's able to do everything I just spoke about, multiplied to infinity. There is nothing we ask for that he cannot give. And he says, ask and you will receive. He knows what we need. But like any good friend, he wants us to come to him and tell him what we require. So speak to him now in your heart.
Are you worried about your children? Tell him. Are you worried about your parents? Are you worried about your spouse? Are you worried about yourself? Tell him. Are you ailing in body? Is it sick or bruised or broken? Tell him. Are you ailing in heart? Has it been hurt and hurt so many times you just ache? Simply by living, tell him. Are you struggling monetarily? Are your finances at an all-time low? Have you been without a job for the longest time? Tell him. Are you struggling with sin or an addiction or a bondage? Are you in a relationship that you can't seem to break or get out of? Tell him. Do you feel you're a bad father or a bad son or a bad daughter or a bad wife or a bad child? Tell him. Do you feel useless, good for nothing? Do you feel your life is going nowhere? You don't have purpose. You don't have meaning. Tell him. But don't just tell him your problems. Ask him to help you. And he will reach out because he is here. Already been enthroned on the praises of his people. He is here and he will reach out. And he will touch you and he will heal you. And he will bless you. And he will set you free. All we really need to do is acknowledge that he is our king. And we're going to sing that song one more time now. Declaring that he is Lord. But not just anyone's Lord. We're going to sing he's my Lord. my Lord. He is my Lord. He has risen from the dead and he's my Lord. He has risen from the dead and he's my Lord. Yes, my knee shall bow. Yes, my knee shall bow. And my tongue confess, confess that Christ is Lord. Christ 
since the beginning of creation and I will love you forevermore. Greater love has no one than he who lays his life down for his friends. And I showed my love for you by laying my life down for you. And I want you to love one another as I have loved you. By this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. But in order to love one another like I love you, you need to be like me. And for that you need my gifts, which I'm willing to give to every single one of you who asks here tonight. I declare the Spirit of the Lord will rest on me in a spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord and piety. Which of you seeks these gifts and how eagerly do you want them? Wisdom, understanding, counsel, might. Might is the fortitude you need to walk in the path that I call you to walk upon. Simply wisdom is not enough. Solomon had wisdom but he lacked fortitude. You need all of them. You need knowledge, knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. And these are given to those who seek. But as I told you already, he who seeks shall find to seek. But don't seek half-heartedly. Seek with the desperation of somebody who wants to know the truth, who wants answers that will unlock the treasures of heaven and all these are waiting for you. Seek. Seek also the gift of fear, a healthy fear of a God who is holy and a God who could have toasted you, but instead a God who showed mercy. But don't take him for granted. Don't take me for granted. Your forgiveness came at a price and the price was every drop of blood that I shed for you. Don't take it for granted. But understand to everyone who repents that forgiveness is there for the taking. And then ask for the gift of piety. The tender filial devotion towards me. And once you start to be like me, I will unfurl the fruit of my spirit. And I will fill your hearts with love, with peace, with patience, with kindness, with goodness, with gentleness, with faithfulness, with self-control. I will make you a chaste people. I will make you a holy nation. I will make you people who bring peace into this world that is hurting. I will make you beacons of light from which the darkness shall flee. I will make you warriors. And I will send you out to do service for my kingdom. And you will teach and you will preach and you will counsel and you will administer. You will be gracious to those who need your help. You will be kind to those who are in pain. You will bring succor and relief to those who struggle. You will set prisoners free. You will make the blind see. You will make the deaf hear. And you will bring the lost back home. You will do this for me. I am here today. Ask. And when you start to do my service, I will release upon you gifts that will build a church, that will build people. I will give you wisdom. I will give you knowledge. 
I will give you faith, mountain moving faith. I will give you the gifts of healing. I will give you miraculous powers. I will bless you with the gift of prophecy so that you can strengthen people through my word. And you'll be able to see things that nobody has seen before. You will be able to discern between spirits, the good and the bad, and your own. You will be able to speak in tongues and you will be able to understand what you speak and what others speak. These are gifts that I have for you for the taking here now. The only question is, do you want them? And how badly do you want them? We're going to ask God to burn us. We're going to ask Him to come with His fire. We're going to ask Him to take away all the wickedness within our souls, our minds, our hearts, our bodies. We're going to ask Him to destroy every one of those things and to give us the fire of His love. Holy Spirit, come with your fire. Purify our hearts. Set my life on fire for you. And my brothers and my sisters, I want us to stand up and sing this song like we've never sung this before. I want us to clap our hands. I want us to shake. I want us to move. Just I, in desperation of our drowning man who seeks the throne. Let us rise and sing to the King of Kings who's here, believing he will give what we ask him. Holy Spirit, come with your fire. Put your hands together, everybody. Everybody, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Come with your fire. Come with your I want everyone fire. to sing. Holy Spirit. With your fire. Come with your fire. Holy Spirit, come with your fire. Fire. 